This video is designed to deliver the basic background information needed prior to the hands-on training for the operation of the Sligo Imaging Cytometer. Here you will learn what the Sligo is and how it operates, including what culture plates can be used, how the Sligo focuses on your sample, and a brief introduction to the imaging and analysis workflow, including the built-in image analysis algorithms and applications. The Sligo is a well-plate-based imaging cytometer. Live plates are placed one at a time in the Sligo, and the entire surface of each well is imaged in bright field, green, red, and blue fluorescence. The high-quality stitched images are then analyzed using built-in algorithms to count every cell in every well. Analysis can be done simultaneous with imaging or, after the fact, using batch processing. Any SBS format dish can be imaged on the Sligo from 1 to 1536 well plates. In addition, there are adapters for T75, T25 flasks, 10 centimeter dishes, chamber slides, and histology slides. It is, however, important to note that not all plate types are good for imaging purposes. Clear plastic culture plates typically have significant autofluorescence in blue, green, and red channels. Therefore, if your experiment requires fluorescence, these are not the plates to use. Typically, black-walled, clear bottom plates are good for fluorescence and bright field imaging. Another important consideration is the flatness of the plate, both from well to well and within a well. Low-quality plates may result in out-of-focus cells within the same well. While these sorts of problems are more prominent in large-format dishes such as six-well plates, they do occur in some varieties of 96 well plates, such as in this example. Here you can see the cells in the center of the 96 well are nice and in focus, providing a sharp image. However, out at the edge of the well, they are out of focus, making it difficult to discern one cell from another. Internal well cleanliness is also an important consideration. The center image here shows what a typical glass bottom dish looks like. It is important to note that the Sligo does not require glass bottom dishes for proper imaging. Nexalom has three categories of plates. They are either unsupported, supported, or recommended. We of course recommend that you use the recommended plates. A listing of plates and their level of support can be found on the Sligo website in the address seen below. Sligo is not a typical microscope objective-based instrument. Instead, the optical system allows for acquiring multiple images based on a single focus event. In this example, each well of a 96 well plate is covered with 16 images that are automatically stitched together. In the Sligo software, a single image is called a field of view. Different size wells require different numbers of images or fields of view to cover the entire bottom of the well. A 1536 well, for instance, requires a single image, whereas a 6-well plate requires 276 images. If it is appropriate for your assay, a smaller number of images per each well can be acquired. These images will not cover the entire bottom of the well. The Sligo has two methods for finding the focus in each well. Hardware-based autofocus is used on high-quality plates and works by reflecting two beams of light off the bottom of the well. Shown here with red dots, the distance between the two beams serves as a measure of sample distance from the objective. With this, the Sligo can adjust the Z position for each well so the sample is in focus each time. Image-based autofocus can be used in lower quality plates that have inconsistent plastic thickness. The image-based autofocus works just like a digital camera where multiple pictures are acquired at different focal depths, or Z positions. The Sligo then analyzes the image for best contrast and automatically chooses the best position in each well to provide a focused image. 
Each time a plate is imaged on the Soligo, the focus must be registered. This occurs in one well, in one channel only, for each plate. Focus registration defines the focus parameters for the entire plate. At the time of focus registration, the user chooses to use either hardware or image-based autofocus for the entire plate. It is also possible to choose no focus. No fo if no focus is chosen, then the entire plate will be imaged without adjusting the focus. This can be useful when imaging large objects of greatly varying size. It is important to know when each focusing method can be used. Hardware-based autofocus requires high-quality plates, such as those plates that appear as recommended in the Sligo website. Hardware-based autofocus is used in workflows where there are very few cells in each well, such as when verifying the deposition of one cell in each well by fax. Hardware-based autofocus can fail if used on plates with inconsistent plastic thickness, such as the inexpensive clear 96 well plates that are often used for non-imaging experiments. Image-based autofocus works well in both high and lower quality plates, as long as there is enough contrast in each well for the Soligo to determine the correct focus. If there are only a few cells in each well, the image-based autofocus can fail. It is recommended that there be at least a thousand cells in each 96 well to use the image-based autofocus. The Z-Focus map is a numerical map of the correct focus position for each well. This map must be generated beforehand and is generally only good for a single lot of plates. This method is mostly useful for applications where high-speed imaging is essential. A fixed focus, or no focus, can be used for applications where samples are large and not affected by small variations in focal depth such as large tumor spheroids. In these slides, I will describe the workflow of experiments performed on the Soligo. At the top of the slide, you can see the workflow progress bar, which is an element of the Soligo's user interface. Each highlighted portion describes a different aspect of the workflow. First, assays are set up with the cells and treatments in a well plate. These are then placed in the Soligo, which begins to scan the plate in one or more channels. Following acquisition, the images are then analyzed to detect the cells. The detected cells can then be further segmented into different populations using the fax-like gating interface. Finally, the numerical results are displayed to the user in the Results tab. Here I will describe a generalized Soligo workflow. We begin with the Start tab. New scans are created by selecting Create New Scan. After selecting the proper plate type and providing a unique name for the plate to be imaged, the software will progress to the Scan tab. Taking a top-down approach, the first step is to choose which application you will be using. Here we will select Direct Cell Counting. The default imaging mode for Direct Cell Counting application is Brightfield. The next step is to register the focus for the scan. This is done in one channel and one well for each plate. Following focus registration and the initiation of the scan, the software will bring you to the Analysis tab. Here, you can either load saved analysis settings or begin to customize settings for this scan. Detected cells will be highlighted by a colored region of interest, allowing you to visually verify the effectiveness of the identification settings. Further segmentation of cell population can be accomplished using fax-like gating. Here, cells are segmented based on their shape. Rounded cells with a form factor value close to 1 are highlighted in yellow, while elongated cells are highlighted with a red region of interest. In the Results tab, the numerical counting results can be expected on a whole plate basis. Here, images and numerical results can be exported to industry standard file types. There are four basic image analysis algorithms built into the Sligo software. Here you can see example images for each and a corresponding line intensity profile for each image. The Brightfield algorithm is for direct cell counting. The algorithm is designed to search for cells with a dark membrane with a bright center. The fluorescence algorithm searches for bright spots above a darker background. The dark object 
looks for dark objects with no bright center, such as crystal violet stained cells. Some cell types are easier to count with a dark focus than a bright field focus. The texture algorithm looks for localized variation in image intensity. An empty dish will have a constant intensity value, a nice even gray background, while areas occupied by cells have both dark and light areas. Each of these analysis algorithms can be applied to any acquired image with varying degrees of success. Within the Celigo software, there are some predefined assays. Some examples of their use are as follows. The confluence assay uses the texture algorithm to detect groups of closely spaced cells to measure total cell area. The confluence assay is well suited to monitoring cell proliferation. Direct cell counting identifies individual cells and is also well suited to monitoring cell proliferation in bright field images. The wound healing assay is designed to work with the platypus oris cell migration assay plates. Here, the closure of the cell-free wound area can be monitored with bright field images and the texture algorithm. There are four predefined cell viability assays. These are generally used with a combination of multiple fluorescence and bright field images. In this example, live cells are highlighted by calcine AM in green, dead cells by propidium iodide in the red channel, and all cells are stained with Huxt 33342, which is a nuclear stain. In the results tab, the percentage of the live and dead cell population will be reported. Expression analysis assays are the most open-ended of the Celigo assays. Here, cell events can be counted and reported in each channel independently. If the assay displays merge, then the independent regions of interest from each channel are merged into a single set of regions of interest that span all channels. Typically, this is done in preparation for further segmentation of cells in the gating tab. In the example here, GFP cells are detected in the green channel, red fluorescent protein cells are detected in the red channel, and non-expressing cells can be detected in the bright field image. Expression analysis assays, with the last channel labeled as mask, are used when there is a single channel or image that can be used to identify all cells, such as a nuclear stain or bright field image. Further segmentation is accomplished in the gating tab. Here, all cells are detected based on nuclear staining with Huxt 33342, while the gating interface can be used to segment green, red, and yellow cells based on their contributions to the green and red images. Colony application uses the texture algorithm to identify and report the number of cell colonies detected. The colony application can also be used with fluorescence and to detect plaques in viral assays. The DNA synthesis assay is a two-channel assay that can be used when assaying cell cycle with either EDU or BRDU to highlight the cells in the synthesis phase. Segmentation of cells into each cell cycle phase is performed in the gating tab. The Celigo software has a suite of assays designed for imaging and analysis of multicellular tumor spheroids. The Celigo can detect and measure multicellular tumor spheroids in bright field images. Spheroid health can be monitored with fluorescent agents and the extent of staining can be monitored either in each channel independently or reported for the inner, middle, and outer zones. To review, the term target is used as a generic term for channel. The term mask in the predefined assays. The term mask is used to refer to the channel in which all cells can be detected. The regions of interest determined from this channel can then be applied to all channels 
and further segmentation of cells can be accomplished in the gating tab. Merge refers to assays where cells are independently detected in each channel and then those regions of interest are merged. Further segmentation of cells can be accomplished in the gating tab. All data is stored in the Saligo database. Images and any completed results are automatically saved and can be reviewed at any time. To review or perform additional analysis of any acquired Scrig scan, choose View and Analyze Scans from the Start tab. Alternatively, scans can be searched, sorted, and archived through the Manage Data tab. Data is stored on a plate-by-plate -plate basis. Each plate has a unique name provided by the scientist. Multiple scans at multiple time points can be associated with each plate. Similarly, multiple analysis can be performed on each scan. Data can be stored either on the local SQL database or on a SQL database located on a network server. Scan data can be exported in an archive format to external disks for long-term storage and backup. Getting help on the Saligo can be easy. On the desktop of each instrument computer, there is an icon for the Saligo Learning Center. This resource contains electronic copies of the Saligo manuals, along with application protocols, posters, white papers, and training videos. This information is also kept in a more updated format online at nexlam.com slash learning The Nexlam website is an excellent source for up-to-date information about the Saligo, its applications, and other cell counting instruments. And of course, live technical support is available during business hours, Eastern Standard Time, and from your local field application scientists.